All right. Thank you for coming to our Right by the Rails July 2021 Writers Enrichment event. Um, today, I am really excited to have Carrie Molina from Yellow Brick Road Studio um, in Gainesville, Virginia to um, join us. Um, Carrie is an amazing um, visual artist and she is the author of a children's book and um, she's just very talented. So I'm gonna let her introduce herself and then she's going to give us some writing prompts and some inspirations to get going. Um, I hope we get some writing done, we can share some of our work and then we will actually put this up on our YouTube as well. So Carrie, take it away. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. It feels um, it feels like a big responsibility, but a big honor. Um, I'm I'm here in the studio. I do have two kids, two cats, and a dog uh, and a husband. So um, if you hear noises, it's because my studio is here in my home in Gainesville, um, down in the basement. But it's really nice. It makes it sound like it's not nice, but it's really nice and it holds eight people. And I teach classes down here. Um, in um, mostly in art, but also some creative writing. Um, <clears throat> I said it was in Gainesville. Um, the the I feel like my mission uh, in life is um, is really just the promotion of creativity, um, and in that it is um, the idea of uh, keeping creativity going with children and then with adults is to like reinvigorate it basically because I feel like everybody's born with creativity it's just something that kind of gets beaten out of us like somewhere along the along the way so um that's kind of why I feel like I'm here in this world um so creativity is a big deal for me so hopefully um you know today will just be another little um stepping stone in my journey of um, sharing creativity along the way. Again, I'm really pleased uh, that Catherine invited me and I hope that I can provide some little different kind of prompts for you today that maybe you haven't had in the past. Um, I thought maybe we would start with just a fun warm up. Um, I have several little prompts today, so I'm thinking that the writing times will be shorter. Um, do we have to, we have to end right at 11, right? Um, so it's already like 10 15. So does that work if we just do um you know shorter prompts and then after each time I thought if anybody wanted to share what they had obviously these well not obviously but hopefully some of these things could turn into longer pieces perhaps maybe later um but for now just kind of sparking an idea that you may not have already had um and start it you know start on it today so yeah, we, we won't get booted, um, Carrie. Um, we said it's for an hour. If anyone wants to hang out a little later, they're, they're welcome to do so if you have time. So we don't want to take up, you know, we respect your schedule. Okay, um, okay so for a fun, creative um, opening uh, and just sort of a warm up, I want you to write down um, 10 letters across the top of your page. So it might just look something like this. Um, and make sure you have a mixture of uh, consonants and vowels. And then you're simply going to have each of those letters be the first letter of words in order. So when I did this, for example, it ended up saying, love doesn't really emerge strongly Today's attitude pushed Beth forward. <laughs> so maybe take a minute and just try that for a fun warm up. It can be silly or fun or ready, go. <laughs>
Anybody want to share their little piece? Brian, I think you're muted. Are you trying to talk to us? Oh, uh, Catherine has everybody muted. Yep. If you want to jump in, unmute yourself. Oh, I see. Or you can call on people and make them talk. How's that? Oh. Yeah, you have that power. It harkens back to my teaching days. All right. No, I, I wasn't trying to talk. I, I my lips move sometimes when I'm writing. <laughs> yep, we all do that. I think we all talk to ourselves. Anybody want to share? Come on, somebody share something funny or something clever. I have some. Okay, go ahead, Megan. Okay, so I'm not sure I did it right, but I, I think I did. Falling apart, coping, self ego loses itself only to heal. Mm. Oh, nice. That sounds like something you totally write, Megan, in your poetry. We all have our little style. It comes out, right? Naturally. <laughs> love it. Love it. And were you going to say something, Catherine? Yeah, I have one, which is weird because I usually write poetry, but this sort of came out um, fiction. Um, Alejandro felt everything. Love quickly meant pain. Nearness became caution. Mm. I'm going to pass that to our romance writers and say, here, write something with that. Write something about Alejandro. Yes. How come you don't have your camera on? Because I want to feature you and because I have a mess in the back and I had a very messy morning. That sound like three excuses right in a row. I have total excuses. Um, because, because I look like garbage this morning. <laughs> okay. Okay, last call for that one. I'll go. Yes, ma'am. Light takes boldness over energy, grasping reasons, always vacillating, evolving. Mm, and, and you even had a V in there. Yeah. Yeah, you challenged yeah. yourself. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a really fun, you know, get get out of your head kind of warm up. <clears throat> I hope you liked. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do a couple. Uh, Catherine had asked me to do a couple that were based on pieces uh, of my own art. So I hope that that will be something fun for you. Um, let's see. So the first one, um, this is something that has to do with my studio as well. So I thought, let me just put it up there really quickly. Um, I'm gonna get the light. Nope, oh, that's not gonna help. Well, I can't actually because... see very well what it is. Is that a guy holding a club? So- No, it's this... one of those Oh, it's a monkey with a hat. Does anybody know what that's from? It looks like the Wizard of Oz. The yep. Monkey. So those the are the monkey. that's the flying yeah. monkey. Oh yeah. Jeez, I'm having trouble with the lighting. Okay, let me just turn it a little. Sort of bear with me there. Oh, I know where it's holding. Okay. What is happening? Okay, so anyway, let me just say that, um, I'll put it back up in a second. So my studio um, is called Yellow Brick Road Studio. And the idea behind it is that, like I said before, um, everybody has their creativity inside them already. They just need to um, sort of come to terms with the fact that that's the case and that everybody, um, so in the movie, I feel like the characters, the point of the movie was that the characters thought they didn't have something inside them that they already did. So when they got to the end and they thought the wizard was going to give them what they needed, he just was a guy who said, you already had it inside you all along. So that's why my studio is called Yellow Brick Road Studio. Um, and that's what I, you know, I kind of like, that's sort of like I said before, kind of my mission and my mantra is that we all have creativity. We just need opportunities to get it out. 
um, and so this piece just happens, I don't, all my artwork is not about the Wizard of Oz, but um, this piece just happened to be something, actually the, it was for a gallery show, I mean, it was an art show that the theme was the Wizard of Oz. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm gonna have to enter that show. Um, but so what I did with this piece is I tried to not make it as cliche. You know, I didn't want to do a picture of Dorothy. So I did several things that were symbolic within the, the story. Um, but not so glaringly obvious. Um, so that's why um, I did use the flying monkey. So basically I feel like in the movie, a lot of the things were obstacles, you know, like the flying monkey they were, they had to deal with. And then the witch of course, who had the, the ball, you know, the, um, what's that called? The crystal ball. And um, the poppy field was also a deterrent along the way and you know, this does symbolize the yellow brick road. Um, this, the stencil here, let's see, it's really hard to see. The, there's the heart that symbolizes like the Tin Man didn't think he had a heart. I'm trying to show you this. This is a big stencil right here that symbolizes the storm. So there's all kinds of things that maybe, uh, you know, obstacles along the way but in the end you have it all inside you anyway does that make any sense <laughs> so any of the things that i just not that you have to write about the wizard of oz but anything that i just said that maybe um made you think of a time in your life or a situation in your life or you know poetry lines or something flying monkeys i don't know but I'm gonna give you, you know, about five minutes and I see what you come up with. And I will continue to try to get the lighting right. I'm gonna mute myself and then play with this again.
Does anybody have any comments or any shares? I was trying to speak and realized I was on mute. Um, yeah, I've got something. Great. All right. Um, the essence of who we are is never discovered until we've blown through many of the obstacles that challenge us. We learn to persevere and believe even when the obstacles seem too much to bear. We emerge strengthened yet realize what we were searching for was within us and a key part of our character. Can I put that on my um, website? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm willing. I have, there was a storm whirling about in my head. Images from childhood have turned sleeping in the forefront, trying to be heard, but there was this monkey, Rico, I think his name was. He always seemed to show up to cause great havoc amongst my thoughts. He carried a large bowling ball this time and was threatening to knock down any thoughts that formed into tangible images. There was also this, this well again that dropped downwards into a murky blackness. What did it mean? Then I felt love, a great love, perhaps for Amy. Would Rico try to knock that over too? I became agitated, woke up with a gasp. I really need to see a shrink about this, I said when I woke in an ice water step. <laughs> <laughs> I have something that's kind of different. And Leslie, I borrowed something of yours. So if dreams are books, in a field of red poppies, when sleep, com when sleep comes in dreamless, yellow brick roads circle going nowhere. The flying monkeys are never free, uh, uh, free of chains, and we are stuck on writing on preset images and thoughts. Heavy thoughts keep us wishing for the unspoken fantasy of wizards and witches, fair and foul, but only blue monkeys linger wishing to be purple free to find the elephant on roller skates to break out of the toy store along with the rocking horse and the little lamb on wheels, but surrounded by poppies, stories are not written or read. Oh, I loved it. Huh. So Leslie has a series of purple monkeys and I have a, 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 a I only, we only have one book, although I found um, a, another one that I sent you know, it's in, in fourth generation. It's called Little Lambs on Wheel, and it's written by the same author that did the Bopsy Twins. So, in, in the first book is the Toy Store, which I've never found, and uh, they all all the toys come to life at night. And then each of the subsequent books in the series is what happens to the toy once it gets sold. Wow! I wonder if that's where the author of Corduroy got got inspiration. Remember Corduroy? Yeah. Children's book. Yeah. So this one, these are old. I have Little Lamb on Wheels, and I I have the monkey on a pogo stick, and I'm still looking for the elephant on roller skates. Oh wow, that's really interesting. I love old books, but you'd get mad if you knew that I cut them up for collages. Well, no, if it depends on this, it depends on the shape they're in when you get. Yeah. Them. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Little Lamb on Wheels was my mom's, and we're not sure if it was her mom's before that, how old it really is. So Mickey and I fought about who got it, but since she was the one that had kids, so now um, my great, you know, my great nieces, they're reading it to my great niece and nephew. So it's kind of oh, cool. I love that. I love that. And the Bobsy twins. I mean, my mother read those and passed them down to me as well. Thank you for that, everybody. <clears throat> Would you like something else now? I thought I would alternate um, and so that they wouldn't all be about my pieces. Um, okay, I have a fun one for you to jot, um, jot this down. You gotta, well, I know you have a pencil, but you ready to jot? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna give you um, categories, 10 categories, and I'm just gonna have you jot down the first thing that pops in your head for each category. So jot down an art supply, anything. Another art word, anything, anything to do with art. A bird, a flower, a 
a number, a day of the week, a fabulous color, something one could collect, a gemstone, and a flavor. And see if you can write a little ditty with all 10 of those words in it.
it looks like people looked up. So did anybody have fun with that one? Mm -hmm. Comments or shares? I'll do it. Total nonsense. The cardinal point turned sour. While the daisy told Tuesday about 14 cat hair brushes that turned all colors magenta. So jade coins revealed themselves as creation. See, it's so fun though, right? It's just coming up with stuff that, you know, your brain would never have, have come up with. Mm -hmm. And maybe a phrase or a line in there will end up somewhere, you know, it's just neat. Yep. I'll go. Haven't done before, so. Um, Another guess, hiding friend. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, there's a face. Hello. Yeah, I was there before, but I was trying to, like Catherine, not distract anybody. Not that people are looking at my face, but. <laughs> you guys aren't distracting. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, this is kind of a painty theme. I dip my mm. brush into the palette. The brilliant reds mm. of the cardinal and hibiscus are elusive. So are the reds and blacks of fire opal. Then I push the brush, then I put the brush down. But you know, I'll just eat my tangerine, inspect my collection of smooth black and pink granite stones and pick up the brush again. This is only Wednesday and I have tried only 31 times. Mm. So fun. Yeah, just along the theme that you were talking about, like overcoming obstacles before, sort of fit. Mm -hmm. And reminding us about creativity and how it's a practice. And if you don't do something creative every day, you know, you'll lose it just like any other skill or sport or. Well, sometimes I think we're too hard on ourselves. You know, we pick a high goal. To I have biscuits in my garden and I have lots of cardinals in my yard. It would be very hard to paint them, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. Are you cardinal? So do you want to hear what, what I came up with? What was the first part you said? Of course we want to hear. Cardinal also. Mm-hmm. So on Monday, in the corners of the non-Pollock work time chaos, I put away the retro pens, shell, fuchsia, cardinal, sort out 11 ideas to keep in mind for the next writing time, put on jade stress bracelets, copper bands, brew lemon verbena tea, shut down, reboot, call number one, incoming, incoming, incoming. Hmm. They can tell I don't like Mondays. <laughs> and these are the poetic license. These aren't actually jade, but they are supposed to be stress bracelets. What is the stone? We all need one. They're an assortment. I got them at Chrysalis <laughs> in um, Herndon. Yeah, I know there's one that's in there. Um... It's blue lace agate, adventuring, and amethyst. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys ever been to Mystic Wellness in, in uh, Haymarket? They no. have things like that there. Mystic Wellness is, um, you know, the post office in Haymarket is it, on the other side of the street where, where they're, where they're um, building a whole big uh, community of homes. Anyway, right on that side of the street, there's a place called Mystic Wellness. They have a lot of those kinds of stones and that kind of stuff, but they they also do floating. If you've never floated, you got to try to float, but um, a lot of, they do a lot of cool stress reliever things there. So okay. might be one of the <laughs> only float tanks uh, in the area. Okay. I have something. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, so I, I uh, the canvas featured eclectic uh, images, an emu, and an iris. I could not make the connection, but <clears throat> I was hoping the artist did, as it had a special meaning, as did the bright, bold, royal purple number nine. Hidden was the Wednesday. I was beginning to wonder if the artist was CIA operative, and this was a code. The backdrop uh, and then faded, muted uh, colors was an assortment of teacups. 
the kind people collect at yard sales with the emerald green, even with emerald greens, the kind cups that you would smell the fragrant bergamot of Earl Grey tea. Ooh. I'm just so, I know it's, I'm such a cliche, but I'm just so in love with all the different things that people can do with the same, you know, 10 prompts. I just love it so much. Anybody else? I would love to actually get a collection of these if anyone wants yes. to, to email them. I'll, uh, when we're done, I'm going to throw the email address into the chat and we'll make a little collection and put them up on our website. Oh, I would absolutely love that because it's just so much, it there's so much there to digest that when someone reads it, of course, it's fabulous, but you like, want to look at it again, you know? Sure. On that last front, um, prompt because we were writing it down so far that's a good one to keep in mind could you put that one in chat you know like you know because I, I I tried to write out what you were saying but then I just ended up writing down the word so I right. would like to see that prompt um, yeah I totally get it I have a million more of those too that I can that I can uh, you know list that's a fun I love that activity because it's different every time depending on your mood hi Andrew a new face. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. I can share one if you like. Oh, great. On, on that prompt. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. With easel and paint, she sketches one hummingbird, brush hovering in midair, drinking from a pink trumpet flower. The color of dawn, sweetness of sunset, then pauses to consider the next strokes as she rubs a smooth turquoise stone from her small collection, part of the process of creation. Mm. What do you got? Very pretty. Very mm. pretty. Thank you so much, everybody. That was fab. Loved it. Um, Okay, you ready for something else? And now for something completely different. Um, I thought it would be fun to throw in there. Uh, well, this it's twofold. This is a piece of mine again, but it's also got quite a backstory. I don't know if you know a lot about Frida Kahlo, the artist. Um, Love her. A little bit. <clears throat> so unfortunately, you know, these famous artists get... Um, known for like Van Gogh gets known for cutting off his ear and Frida Kahlo gets known for having a unibrow, you know, but there's, so, there's so much more behind these, um, these amazing, you know, artists. And I mean, I could do a whole, a whole session on just Frida because she's so interesting, but obviously just for the sake of this, um, just a, a little bit of a backstory, and then I will show you my piece about her. So maybe you're jotting a couple of these ideas down, and some of it is not for the faint of heart, um, but I don't know if you know, but she had a terrible accident as a teenager. Uh, a bus that she was on, <clears throat> and the reason I'm telling you this is because it it's um, start, that's how her art started, her, her whole idea of doing art. I'll tell you why in a minute, but <clears throat> excuse me, she had, um, she was riding a bus and it was, it got uh, rammed by an out of control um, trolley. And um, she was, um, she was impaled, not only was she impaled by a steel rod, but she had, um, I have to read this part, several broken vertebrae, a broken collarbone, two broken ribs, a shattered pelvis. Her right leg had 11 fractures. Her right foot was crushed. And if that wasn't enough, the rod had pierced her, bot <clears throat> pierced her body, impaled her entire body, and it exited through her vagina, causing her to later say that the accident had taken her virginity. So absolutely insane and horrific and crazy accident. She ended up in a full body cast and she was um, quite a character to begin with, but she, um, she was bored and she turned to painting on her body cast. 
And that is how the whole thing started, um, which I think is absolutely fascinating. Uh, and then she had a, um, a marriage to another famous character called um, uh, Rivera, um, Diego Rivera. And he was also quite a character. So their story together was bananas. Um, they, they were unfaithful. She, he, he, he was unfaithful to her with her sister. Um, but then she forgave him. And then um, they ended up having an open relationship after that. They could do whatever they wanted. Um, just, I mean, there's political stuff in there with um, communist friends and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's really worth reading, you know, reading more about. Um, her pieces are quite uh, graphic sometimes. She had problems with conceiving. So she had several miscarriages, not conceiving, I guess, but with, um, you know, she, she could not have a baby. She had several miscarriages. Um, so that shows up in her work a lot as well. She's just a really, really fascinating um, character to study, you know, completely self-taught. Um, but I wanted to show you a, a piece that I did, just a picture of Frida with, uh, it's a mixed media piece with collage as the background and several stones and beads around it. So hopefully um, maybe you got some inspiration from her, from her story and from other things maybe that you already know about her. But this is what I did. Also known for her very elaborate costumes, um, not costumes, but she dressed in, in uh, very elaborate florals and um, always had headpieces and things like that. She had a lot of like pet pets running around her, her property, monkeys and tropical things. Any, anyway, I kind of hope that maybe that would be a fun story prompt about Frida Kahlo. So take a few minutes on that one.
It looks like people are still writing and so I feel bad interrupting. Give me a thumbs up if you think we're good to go. Okay, that makes me feel better. Okay, um, anybody comment or share? Yeah, I, I have one. I think I'm ready to, to, to lead. Great. Um, so, uh, so it was funny because I started and, and, and well, you can tell me whether you think it's. So I took it from Diego's point of view. He's having a coffee with another woman at a cafe. That goes, Diego sat drinking espresso at the cafe, talking with a woman who he had wanted to know in a variety of ways. You are magnificent, Toto. I want to paint you. Do you, she said. She had heard his many times and sometimes put the speaker up on his request. I would rather be painted by your wife, Frida, though. Diego looked away, smiling. Frida would not be interested. Besides, I am the one inspired. Does the subject have no inspiration in wanting to be painted? I know Frida. I have read about her and am fascinated with her story. I've seen her and marveled at her confidence, despite the tragedy of the past. She exudes life and renewal. And what is wrong with me and my work? I am sure, Signor, that your inspires. Inspiration comes from sex. Frida's comes from life. Good day, Signor Rivera. With that, she rose from the table and walked away. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's cool. Sounds like him, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I uh, never read about him. <laughs> yeah, well, you should. <laughs> Maybe you will now. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. Fabulous. OK, that bus. Long ago, but indigo shadows of pain lurk, emerge, subside. But we are given what we are given, to make do as best we can make do. My fingers take the dark, make new light, new bright. Riots of radiant yellow, crimson, lilac, orange, tur turquoise on my canvas, which without barrier flow to my dress, my scarf. A glowing luminescent world to create and play in. Mm. Huh. Wow. Beautiful. Thanks. Oh, I can read mine short. I just did it from perspective of looking at Frida herself. Frida was a woman who had known many sides to life and it was these life challenges that shaped her. She wasn't the type to be overwhelmed by adversity, but to embrace it and grow. It gave her art depth and meaning, her, her unique style excuse me, her unique personal style reflected her boldness. Yes, indeed. Anybody inspired to look her up? <laughs> I have a book of her art in my living room. Do you? Yeah, and I, I went to visit her house in Mexico, which is what I ended up writing about. Do you want to share? Sure, it is the start of a poem, I think, so thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's called it Frida. I visit her home in Mexico, colors of a lifetime wafting through hallways. I wish I could remember more than spears, but poles and paling a young flowered body are all that come to mind. It's all relative, I suppose. My pain, her pain, the pain of an entire country. Everybody hurt, so the song goes. But how she painted that pain to last is something of a mystery. Who knows what colors refuse to fade? Who knows the way a soul will linger? Who knows the way we come back again, what will become immortal? Wow. It's just so exciting to, I don't know, to be the one who inspires art like that, these, these pieces. It's just really, really humbling, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, she was quite a character. She, she even, um, she, at the end of her life, she uh, did have a solo show and she was too ill to, to really attend. And so she had people carry her in her bed um, to the place. Some story about that. So I mean, she, was, she was a nut <laughs> in the best possible way. Um, so in the interest of time, um, I'm going to give you this last one, um, a choice. So I've uh, 
combine two things together, not combine them, but give you a choice and you can see which one speaks to you. Um, the first one is simply um, to use um, this as an inspiration, the, the idea of your, your life as an artist, meaning um, maybe you have some memories of art classes as a child. Um, what, what was it like at school? You know, did you have any art teachers that inspired you? Did you have any art teachers that did just the opposite, meaning they were like, no, you did it wrong, or you'll never amount to much, or one of those kind of stories? Um, were you someone like me who didn't even have room in their schedule for art classes? Um, so I, I didn't really come to it till, till, till later. Um, you know, did you ever do a piece that you thought was great? Or did you ever try, you know, try, try it, even though you're not a trained artist or anything in that, in that line? Or was there ever a time you saw a piece of art that really um, spoke to you for whatever reason? So something along those lines, maybe. And then the other prompt I was thinking about was um, the art of uh, Claude Monet in that he was um, groundbreaking uh, because up until then he, the, uh, the conventional art was really, you know, very much to paint what you saw and skies were blue and grass was green and all of that. And he was like, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to try to really paint what I see, meaning um, if it looks, you know, peachy to me, then I'm painting it peachy um, to the point where he would go. And that's where you get these, um, the Rouen Cathedral pieces, you know, the, um, this is one of the Rouen Cathedral, I'm probably saying it wrong, Rouen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's a, I'll, I'll tell you the spelling in a minute, but I don't speak French, but um, to the point where he would go, this is just one sample, but he would go to, uh, that he would paint the same scene like throughout the day, just incessantly painting it over and over and over uh, so that he could show that the different light of different times of the day um, showed differently to him. That was why uh, it, it became known as impressionism because it was his impression of what the light was doing to uh, what he saw throughout the hours of the day, and it just became tagged as Impressionism. Um, Monet was seeking to free himself from artistic conventions and to paint exactly what he saw, not what he knew was there. He also sought to create a sense of instant instantaneity to show a scene as it was at one moment in time. And I don't know if you can see this because of the lighting, but this is an example of um, several of the scenes but at different times of day. I mean, the same cathedral, but at different times of day. And so he has, oh gosh, what'd I do? He has series and series and series and series and series of, the, of paintings of the same place at different times. So just the idea of, you know, that things, things uh, look different depending on when you look at them. So hopefully you can pick one of those and we'll come back in five.
can take another minute. Thumbs up if you're ready. It's about half, so take one more minute. And comments or shares? Um, I also made some shorter. I can go first. Uh, so I, I took the one uh, because I don't know how many people here do artwork, but I, that's what I start out doing. I'm a writer now, but I start out doing artwork and I studied art. So I just oh. did that. Because I've written so much on other artists, I thought, I don't know if I can do Claude Monet any justice at the moment. <laughs> anyway, um, coming from an artistic family, I had been drawing since the day I could pick up a pencil or pen. My mother tried oil painting and painted landscapes, mostly houses and interiors. Her, her perspective was not good, but her colors were. Her strength was figures and faces, and, I and as I progressed through classes, I inherited that skill. I studied fashion design, but after years of not knowing what to do with the design skills I had, I gave up art. Later, I would join a local, local art association and slowly return to it to discover that I was no better off finding my niche or my style. I wrote an uh, arts for our local paper and I taught workshops and understood the concepts, but I couldn't design what I felt strongly within myself about my environment. I was trying hard to fit into another artist's ideals, emulating their skills, and I failed. One day, to my amazement, I got best in show for a whimsical piece featuring three ladies playing bingo. I never imagined it would be, it would be a winner. So a couple of years later, I discovered Zentangles and incorporate them into my art from my own unique style and found my artistic voice. Okay, I love that I now know a little bit more about you. And now I want to see the ladies playing bingo. I, I think I have that somewhere on my computer, but yeah, I, I never thought that thing would sell. I just, I dashed it off, I think, in one afternoon and you know, got best in show. It was amazing. Yeah. So that just sa says that uh, it was inside you and it just came out and that's always the best, right? Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I've got one on, on, on Claude Monet, who I've got to admit is probably one of my favorite artists. I used to have the water lilies as posters in college until they sort of fell apart. So absent. <laughs> uh, this still needs some editing. Uh, absence. Light filters out night. The canvas glows. Thought over matter when joy is a hue. I walk into a kaleidoscope where prints where prism points of color and a prism freed of darkness moves, random images, a palette to welcome me home. Okay, I just wrote down joy is a hue because that is beautiful. Yeah, yeah well, I had to do a rough edit because I realized in the first four, four lines I had hue like four times and I couldn't decide whether I liked the canvas glows uh, the, I had the canvas glows and hues thought over matter when joy is a hue and definitely joy is a hue wins over the canvas is, is hues. 
Yes. So I teach a, a, um, a yearly camp uh, for women. It's called Joy of the Journey. So if you start following me on my Facebook page, you'll hear a lot about that right now because I'm in the depths of planning it and writing it and coming up with all the, but anyway, so, I'm, so the word joy for me is very, um, you know, it, because of that course, I'm always thinking about that. And that is a great little tagline. I love that. And I will steal it. No, I'm just kidding. No, go ahead. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure else has already done it, but um, <laughs> plastic art. So um, poetry. I mean, I, I, my mom was a painter and my sister did ceramics and I dabble in, in beading. But when it came to it came to actual artwork, I, I mean, not mm -mm, it just my mom's kind of like Monet where, you know, like I look at a sky and I say, oh, okay, a blue sky. And she's like, oh, well, there's some cream and there's some egg white and there, oh, that needs a dash of brown. And I'm like, yeah. And then, you know, when you see the end painting, oh, it's a, you know. <laughs> it looks right. Yeah. Well, I teach, I'm not a realistic painter by any means. That's just not what I aspire to do or anything. So if you're ever interested, I do a lot of mixed media work, uh, a lot of mixed media classes classes and things like that so no one is ever wrong like no painting ever comes out wrong because we don't do realism so anybody else come on brian i know you want to yeah i do okay <laughs> see i knew it okay let's see. okay <clears throat> this one turned into a, a bit of a short story very short curtain up the read Okay, I had a passion for impressionistic artists, none so much as Claude Monet. I traveled around the globe, taking in shows of his work, following it, one with his thoughts, with his mind, his touch upon the canvas. It's no wonder then that I moved heaven and earth in my schedule to view what was advertised as a show of previously unseen masterpieces of Monet, a small, exclusive showing. As I walked around the familiar works of his, I noticed a few I was sure I had never seen. Then came the featured exhibition of four paintings. He was famous for capturing the same scene in different lighting in the same day, but these were unique. It was the same landscape, and yet instead of the sky, it was the landscape that changed. More to the point of building, that was the centerpiece of each canvas. The first, the new perfect engineered building of pristine stone and sculpture. The next, the dingier stone missing a few decorations in the exterior molding. The third, a column upon the portico is missing and the vegetation grew wilder around it. And finally, Upon the last canvas, a building ruined, long vacated, and claimed by the earth. A man approached me from the rear, staring at the same painting. What do you think, he asked. Incredible, it looks like Monet, every breaststroke, and the very feeling, yet so different. How could he capture such imagery? Surely it must have been painted over many years. Many years indeed, he sighed, many centuries. Looking closely, I noticed that the last painting had no signature. This one wasn't signed. Forgive me, sir, how could I have been so forgetful? With that, the gentleman disappeared momentarily, then returned with a small paint palette and a brush. Reaching in, he began to flick the brush along the bottom of the canvas. Wait a minute, how dare you? I, I, I said with a start. Then I went mute as I noticed that the signatures matched. Exactly. Wow, you have a real knack for writing a lot um, in a short time. And that's fabulous because you can just go back and you know, even if you just take part of it, my gosh, that's a great skill. Love it. And I love how everybody's just so different. Last call, anybody else? Well, I just like to say thank you again. I really hope that this gave you some fun for this morning and, uh, and thank you again to Catherine for um, inviting me. Oh, Carrie, thank you so much. I love this. I have so much good stuff to work with now. Thank you. Aww. Yeah, good. thank you. It was really great. Thanks very much. Um, if anyone uh, wants to send their writing exercise results to, um, to us, I can put them together in a PDF. We'll put them up on the website. Um, we will be also putting this recording on YouTube and sharing that. Um, but you can send your writing exercises to writebytherails at gmail.com. And I drop that address into the chat. Yes. And uh, I really appreciate everyone coming today. Have a very beautiful, inspirational day.
and keep writing. Hopefully we'll see you next month. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.